Okay, we got minus 20 every single day in Winnipeg right now. And often what I end up doing is driving further north than Winnipeg and finding minus 30. But this time, what I'm doing is I'm leaving my old truck behind forever here at Midtown Ford. I'm here to pick up a brand new truck and go on a road trip with Marcel on the camera. And we are either gonna go east and find warmer weathered ice fish, we are gonna go west and find warmer weathered ice fish, or we are gonna go south and find warmer weathered ice fish. But we will find warmer weathered ice fish we got Dylan Fui in here, the king of cars, the guy to see for getting a new vehicle. In my case, a brand new F-150 diesel. Check it out. Dylan Fui. How's it going, buddy? Good. This is it, I'm assuming? This is it, buddy. Your brand new diesel. Wow, the diesel loved that ride. I think you can probably tell we're not in Kansas anymore. We are in the mountains in Alberta, maybe close to the BC border, not really sure. Kyle, get over here. Look at this behind us, amazing. One thing that we didn't find is warmer weather. It is still minus 33 degrees this morning. This is my buddy Kyle Polichuk. We've been friends for 15 or 20 years, I don't know, basically forever. Say hi, Kyle. How's it going? It's what a little are, cold out this morning. It's cold. And what are we targeting today for fish species? Cutthroat trout. I've never caught a cutthroat trout. So, I mean, the scenery is one thing, spectacular, but being able to target a species I've never targeted before is going to be very cool too. We're going to get the snowmobiles unpacked and we're going to charge into the mountains into a tiny little clear, perfect cutthroat lake and see what we can find. made it. We've got like steep shorelines here. You can see it's a nice toboggan slide down to the lake and we might not even be able to get our snowmobiles on. So we're probably just gonna hand truck our gear on. There's amazing mountains here, like crazy Kyle. How did you do this? How did you find such an amazing spot for us? Sometimes it just works out. This is, look at this, hundreds of pounds of gear, literally. This was way too much work for guys that brought snowmobiles all the way from Manitoba to the mountains. Like I was saying, when we were coming across, you can see the shoreline, grass, no rocks breaking through, and here there's rocks breaking through because the shoreline actually extends out a little bit. It's a very subtle point. None of us have been here before, but you can see that on a map and you can also just see it when you get to the lake. When you get ice on the blades like this, I, tw I twist it to the side because you force it to kind of flex funny and it snaps that ice off there because right now I've got ice still on the blades. There, you hear that noise? That's the ice coming off and now it's gonna cut nicely. Ooh, that's a lot of ice. What, what does it feel like? Is it hard? No, it's mud. For sure? Well, look, you can see the dirt. This is perfect because we see there's rock right here. There's mud right there. We're gonna find our edge that we want. Can you hear that? We found it's rock. Definitely rock. So the chisel's this high and we've got the auger flight that's this much and we've got that much water underneath the ice. So that's, it's gonna be shallow. We'll have to yeah. be quiet. You'll have to be quiet. It's not gonna be easy for you. <laughs> We got our hole sawed out here and we cut it into two pieces just to make it easier to push them under. Oh, watch out, Kyle. So two nice manageable pieces now. Okay. It should be under. Go, 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 go. Hard, hard, hard. Yay, that was fun. That took a lot of time to set up and now you get to enjoy the inside of the otter instead of the mountains, unfortunately. But that's what happens when it's minus 30. So we're gonna give you some sight fishing here. What, Kyle, why don't you tell the folks at home what you're using for a lure there? Today I've got on just a small jig and wrap. Real small. Yeah, real small. Aaron's got something a little more natural, so I went with something a little brighter here. We'll see how this goes. I'm using just the small size of Frostbite Dinner Bell in a Blue Lagoon color. I'm not planning on using this for long. I've got a secret weapon I'm gonna tap into right away, but this is just gonna get things started and we'll go from there. Oh yeah, that's awesome. So on this side, you can see that's kind of a sand bottom and then the weeds and the soft bottom over here. So we are perfectly on that edge and hopefully the cutthroat are relating to that edge also. 
Fish, fish, fish. Oh, hello. Hello. My very first cutty. Oh, no, come back. Come back. <laughs> oh, I paused it just a little bit, hoping it'd suck it in. Oh, here we go, boys. Right down there in the weeds, watch this. He's crawling. He's crawling and moving. There, here we go. Got him. Come on, please, please, please. Got him. Case Caddis acquired. This is where I switch to my secret weapon. Are you kidding me? Frostbite Tungsten Jig. I think this is a blaze color. I've got some different options here, but I'm pretty happy with this one for some visibility. My Caddis has left his shell and I'm going to hook him on ever so gently. Take a look at how dainty that is. And I guess it kind of looks like even a freshwater shrimp on there. Fish under you, fish under you, fish under you, Kyle. Just went shallow. The fish has got to be in one foot of water. Yep, no, coming to you, coming to you. Keeps going in circles, he's right under. Tell him where that cased caddis, uncased caddis is. No, he's just, yeah, he's coming over there. Kyle, you have no chance if he sees his caddis. He's coming to you, coming to you, here, here. I know, I know, I've got a caddis on. Of course he's coming to me. It's over here, hey. Nope, that's the wrong one, buddy. Wrong one, wrong one. Yeah, no, 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 hey, over here, over here. He's got, he's got to know that's the wrong one. Yeah, here you go. Nope, wrong one. There you go, nope, wrong one. Can you hear us, can you hear us, can you hear us? Here, yeah, there's the case caddis. Yeah, we'll get it moving away from you. There you go. Yeah, good boy. <laughs> Crushed you. Here you go. I'll give you a good look. My first cutthroat ever. Cool looking fish. He's got those flame gashes underneath his face. It looks like he's bleeding underneath his gill plate there, and that's why it's called a cutthroat. He's not bleeding. These are just some nice markings there. Okay, I'm gonna pop that jig out and just let him go right here. There he goes. Happy fish. My first cutthroat. Not that you helped at all, but. <laughs> I drew him in. Okay? You kept him entertained I drew for a little him bit. In. Now I have no bait again. I gotta go back to a jigging spoon to catch myself another case caddis. Okay, here comes another one. It is crazy how many of these things are crawling around down there if you're watching. Okay. Another caddis. Look out, Kyle. Cutthroat number two coming up for me, I think. Mm. This is a process. Now I take the spoon back off, put the tungsten back on, and what have you been doing this whole time? I'm actually fishing for caddis. I spent more time today now fishing for caddis than I have for cutthroat. I've been eating Pringles. You can see how tiny this three millimeter jig is compared to my thumbnail. And these, these bugs, these case caddis are crawling around on the floor of basically every lake. Hopefully you saw this already in the last video, but this one is in the case and I'm going to hook him here. Looks like I'm hooking him in the butt. I have a plan. Kyle doesn't seem to have a plan. He hasn't adapted very much. <laughs> I'm going with the original game plan. A lot of Pringles. I get to go with the easy dead stick thing here. Although I actually had horizontal movement when I teased that fish. Did you notice that? I was swimming the jig away from him and he swam up behind it like a pike behind a bunny leech and sucked it in. Or a cutthroat behind a caddis. Yeah, cutthroat behind an uncased caddis on a tungsten jig, just like it. There's a show on net, another oh, show. Oh yeah, big fish, big fish, big fish, big fish. Oh yeah, that's a oh, big yeah. cutty. That's the one. That had to have been like a high teens fish. Or a 20. Was big. Do you think he showed any interest in my lure? Uh, I couldn't just... see where your lure was, but he was coming straight towards it for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, There's yeah, no yeah. way he wasn't coming towards it. I sort of feel like when I started moving it, he turned and left. How much were you moving it when he came in? Zero? I wasn't. I don't think I was. I think I was holding it and like maybe oh, just shivering. Was it story it. time? Was it story time and you just weren't, weren't paying attention? <laughs> okay, we saw three cutthroat today. It was a tough day out here. Yeah, not a crazy day, uh, but when you combine the scenery and everything, would I say it was worth it for that one little fish? Absolutely not. Not, <laughs> not even a little bit. What was cool was to see the big one at the end to leave hope for the future. And yes, the scenery was magnificent as we keep saying. Thank you for watching. Thank you for enjoying the scenery in this day with us. 
And who knows where we'll be tomorrow, but I'm sure Kyle will take us somewhere better than this. <laughs> Hopefully.